fun. A while back I started a project where I was going to blueboard my entire basement. So as you can see, I've got the one wall done over there and I have this wall done and then going back to the left behind the stairs I have more done. But it's a really, really big pain in the rear end trying to do this stuff because it doesn't cut well at all. It makes a mess. So I decided to try hot wire cutting. And um, it was a cool idea, but when you're doing big, huge eight foot pieces, it's a bit of a problem. So a little bit of YouTube research, I came up with um, a modified version of something I found online. This one's portable. And uh, it operates by keeping tension on the back end here as the wire heats up and expands slightly. It, um, you know, keeps it straight because the tension on the rubber bands in the back and these two joints are not um, super tight, so it allows it to flex. When I turn it on, you'll see that it starts glowing red. It'll cut way before it glows red, but hopefully that's picking up on the video. And it's fine for doing cuts that you're not too worried about being super precise. You know, it works pretty well. It's portable, it's nice. The problem is, when you're trying to go into a two foot wide piece, that you're only as deep as the throat on the device. So, okay, I went for round two. For round two I've already disassembled, but I do have the frame of it. This was round two. This was going, well, this actually was mounted in here, and the hot wire was coming down in between. Now this would allow me to push an entire eight foot piece through and cut it um, along a fence. So I got nice, precise, long cuts, but I was going and only able to do long, skinny ones. Then I ran into the problem where I needed to cut a two foot wide piece, but have it only be two feet tall or three feet tall. Now I was stuck again. I didn't have enough throat on this one to do it, and there was no way that piece could handle anything wider than a two foot wide piece, or that device over there. So, follow me. I just finished the ultimate hot wire cutting device. That's what I'm naming it, okay? The ultimate hot wire cutting device is better than all of them combined because I can take this thing, assemble or disassemble it without any problem at all. So if I want to take this one apart, I can basically disconnect it. I can take this wire and put it up out of the way. My table's totally free. There's nothing on here other than a fence and I have the fence temporarily clamped on. There's rubber bands at the top if you look. So it's keeping tension on things. See it there? As it stretches. That red wire going all the way around stays far out of the way and it connects down at the bottom to my battery source. Now if you come over here with the camera, I'll show you how I just basically um, have this little device under here to hold the hot wire in place. You need to be very precise when you're making these hot wires out of nichrome wire because if you're too long or too short your resistance is going to be off. So you have to tune the hot wire length to be acceptable for your power source. In this case I'm using 7.2 volt racing car batteries. So what I've done here is I've just basically wired up my workbench to use these 7.2 volt NICAD batteries or nickel metal hydrides. Little on off switch, one wire going up the wall over to the top of the larger wire which is holding tension on the nichrome wire. The other end going underneath to the little spring-loaded mechanism. It's super simple to make a new hot wire whenever I need to. I'll use a string as an example. If I can get it out here. Basically I just take some of my nichrome, I put it around a screwdriver, hold it in my needle nose pliers, you know, instead of my fingers, make a twist or two, and then when I take that out, then I have the top loop. So I can put that top loop on here. The bottom, the bottom, all I do is string it underneath here, 
and then as I turn the power on, I just gently pull the string through, pulling it down until I see it start glowing, just barely glowing red. At that point I stop, turn the power off, loop the bottom wire around once or twice, and I'm done. I've got my perfect length for the nichrome wire. So now, if it's just slightly overcharged, your nichrome wire will just simply stretch a tiny bit. Mine stretched maybe a quarter of an inch, and then the red glow went away because at that point, the length of the wire increased the resistance. So, when I was finished, as long as you take care to make your vertical a true vertical, you can get super precise cuts. I just turned it on. You see it smoke a little bit from an old cut. I set this to be just one quarter inch right now. So I'm going to take off one quarter inch with my rail and I'm going to show you how nice and easy this cuts. If you're going a little too fast, no problem. The wire just flexes and it kind of gives you a visual cue that you're going a little too fast. Now it's not the fastest cut in the world, but who cares? It's really clean, it's really neat, there's no mess in my shop, and it does a fantastic job of precision. When I'm done this cut, you'll see just how precise of a cut this makes. So out of all my ideas, this turned out to be the most simple. It's out of the way, it's not in the way of anything, you don't even have to hold that hun. It'll just fall right off, don't worry about it. As I finish up here, we're done. And look at that. I shut it off. Look how nice that edge is. The little tiny riffle there and there and there was when I was just varying my speed slightly because I was talking. Put this down on the table. You can see how nice that straight edge is. Ninety degrees. Perfectly straight. So, there you have it. It's the, uh, what did I call it? <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate. The ultimate. Something, something. <laughs> hot wire cutter. Something like that. I'll have to name the YouTube video. But, uh, yeah, it's really fantastically simple. Runs off of 7.2 volt car batteries and uh, not much to it. I can take two screws out of the bottom and put the entire thing away so that my table's back to normal without any fuss at all. I can set it up in about five minutes, not even, probably three minutes, and be ready to go. Simple rubber band at the top for tension, and that's it. Let me know what you think.